our lazy lizard brains are not wired to make us healthy. They are wired for laziness and energy conservation. However, we can make healthy habits. It takes a little bit of work on the front end, but then they can keep working in our favor in the background automatically for years. Before I get into how though, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I release a new video so you don't miss a thing. And if you are new here, welcome. I am Coach Mac, the founding health coach of Running With Bacon, where I help women feel like themselves again via fitness one small step at a time. Now, like I said, we can use healthy habits to our advantage. If you saw last week's video, I talked about habits are really just a brain hack that we've come up with to help save energy. And so with that in mind, we can design our habits the way we want them so that they keep working for us. And there are a few ways we can go about doing that. A quick caveat for all of these methods of designing habits, understand that not all habits will fit into your life the same way in different seasons of your life. There might just be some really hectic few weeks or even a couple of months that you have and habits, they, they just fall off. It happens. But then once things start to settle down, you can begin using these principles again to build back up those healthy habits so that they are working for you in the background. The first of those ways or the first thing that we can use is BJ Fogg's behavior model. And you can see here on the left side, it has motivation going from low motivation to high motivation. And then on the bottom, it has our ability or essentially how difficult a thing is to do going from really hard to then easier. And then the curve on the graph is actually the action line. So basically anything under the curve, it's not very likely to happen. Anything above the curve, it is likely to happen. Take, for example, running a marathon. It's really hard, right? So it'd be all the way on the left side of the graph. And then you can see there, in order to be above the action line, you would need a ton of motivation to get that marathon done. Because like I said, it's really hard. Versus think it, walk to the mailbox. It goes way over to the easy side of the spectrum. So you really don't need much motivation at all I mean, maybe you've got something waiting for you in the mail, but it doesn't take much motivation to walk out to the mailbox. And so if something is easier, it takes less motivation to do it. If it's harder, it's going to take way more motivation to do it. And so by playing with these motivation factors, we can change the likelihood that they are actually going to happen. So you can break things down into smaller and smaller steps, making them easier, therefore reducing the motivation that you need to do something. An example of breaking this down, I'm gonna stick with the running or walking to the mailbox example. You can break it down to something even easier, putting on your sneakers. How easy is that? Super easy, right? So even less motivation is required for that. Well, once you have your sneakers on, you've gotten into action. So the motivation is going to start increasing because Motivation follows action. And so then you might be able to do something like walk out the door, take those first few steps, get started. And so it builds on that motivation. The action builds up your motivation to do things. So then you can do harder and harder things. Another way to start thinking about designing your habits is to use James Clear's four laws. So he says to make it obvious. So for example, if you want to put in more miles on your bike, stop hiding it in the closet, put it out in the middle of your living room so you're actually going to use it. He says to make it attractive, make it something that you want to do. Maybe you can give yourself some type of incentive to do the thing. His third law is to make it easy. That goes along with BJ Fogg's model. The easier something is, the less motivation you need to do it. And the fourth law is to make it satisfying. Give yourself, like I said, some type of reward. Give yourself an incentive to do it. Maybe at the end of whatever process or at the end of so many days of doing it, you get something. And recall from last video that the process of a habit, it's a behavior. There is the prompt, there is the behavior itself, and then there is the result, which in our case, we want it to be a reward so that that loop continues because we change best by feeling good, not by feeling bad. So again, James Clear's four laws are make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. 
And the last strategy that I have for you for designing your habits, creating them up front so that then they work for you for years to come in the future is to use technology in your favor. Oftentimes when we think about getting healthy, it means staying off technology, using it less, minimizing screen time and all of those things. And while I'm not opposed to any of that, I also think that we can use technology to our advantage to help us develop the healthy behaviors we want. For example, you can use a habit tracker. There are tons of apps out there that are habit trackers, and that can help serve as your incentive or your reward for doing something. Don't underestimate the power of just checking that box or tapping that you completed something. That is a little reward that we can give ourselves that will keep that loop going. And keeping a streak alive, Oh my gosh, if that's not incentive, I don't know what is because I will tell you, I will keep a streak alive for as long as possible. In addition to habit trackers, you can just use simple apps on your phone. You can set alarms. And if you don't want 50 alarms going off every day, you can set, use the reminders app and just schedule them. You can even have them repeating in there. So if it's something that you want to do Monday through Friday, or even if it's something you want to do every day, you can have it repeat so that you set it up once on the front end. And then the, your phone gets you to keep doing your habit by sending you a little notification each time it's time to do the thing. So you set it up once, just like our habits. We, we set them up, we design them once on the front end, and then they keep working for us after that. So don't think that using technology is cheating. It's not. Use it to your advantage. You have it in your hand all day anyways, just use it. And if you want to take these strategies and put them into action today, I recommend starting with my free Fit in 5 five-day challenge where all you have to do is move your body for five minutes, five days in a row. It really is that easy. And it uses all of these principles, again, making it really easy so you don't need a bunch of motivation, making it satisfying. I keep it fun and high energy. You will feel great coming out of it. And it even uses technology because I will email you each day as a reminder to do the five minute circuit. So it uses all of these principles and you can get started today. I'll put the link in the description box, sign up and I'll be in your inbox soon.